The title of my message is The Day of Atonement. Key verses, verse 30. Let's read the key verse together. Okay. Please. Because on this day, atonement will be made for you to cleanse you. Then before the Lord will be clean from all your sins. Until now, we studied Leviticus up to chapter 15. <coughs> Chapters 1 through 7 are about five base offerings. The burnt offering, the grain offering, the fellowship offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering. All this refer to Jesus and Christian life. And chapters 8 through 10 are concerning the ordination of the priests and beginning of their ministry. The, ordi the ordination was done very carefully and solemnly. It lasted seven days. Each day, a bull for a sin offering, a ram for a burnt offering, and a ram for ordination offering was sacrificed. Seven days, seven bulls and fourteen rams. <coughs> then it was before God and before the whole assembly of the Israelites at the entrance to the tent of the meeting. And Aaron and his sons had to stay there day and night for seven days. Otherwise they would die. Again, only Aaron's Descendants could be priests, and through this solemn ceremony, they went up as a period declared toward the early Christians, suffering and scattered, but a chosen people, royal priesthood. How sensational it was! Believers in Christ Jesus have great identity as a royal priests. And when Aaron, when Aaron carried out his duty, priestly duty, in obedience to God's command, glory of the Lord appeared. Fire from the presence of God came and burnt all the offerings. People rejoiced and fell face down. However, when Aaron's sons did not follow God's command, they died. Priestly duty was uh, solemn. In chapters 11 through 15, it's about cleanliness and uncleanness. God said, be holy because I am holy. God was concerned about what people eat, food, a woman delivering a baby, and those who had infectious skin disease, leprous disease, and those who had bodily discharge. Then God for helping Polina, to have a safe and sound natural delivery. Thank you for your prayer. May God help her to have a time of a smooth recovery <coughs> and complete full restoration. And body was in deep fellowship with God. God really wants his people to be holy in the matter of daily eating. Eating is daily matter. Set apart from the people of the world. You see, in this world, people are so concerned with uh, gourmet foods and delicacies. But God's people used to be different, to eat for the glory of God, be mindful of others, and always thankful, be content. <coughs> In daily matter of eating, they may keep their identity as holy people. And when diseased people, God wants them to be healed and released, and they become like birds flying in the expanse of the sky. Wonderful freedom in Christ Jesus. This was a part of holy life as holy people. Freely fly. Today's passage, chapter 16, is the core of Leviticus. It excellently shows Christ's sacrifice and his work. So it's one of the most important chapters in the Bible. Verse 1 says, The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of Aaron's two sons, 
when they approached the Lord. When they used unauthorized fire, they died. Fire came from the presence and consumed them. The unauthorized fire can be in our time to serve the Lord in a humanistic way apart from Christ's death and resurrection. Anyway, here, the death of his two sons was a very painful event to Aaron. So God spoke to him through Moses. Tell your brother Aaron not to come whenever he chooses is the most holy place behind the curtain. In front of the atonement cover on the ark, or else he will die. Because I appear in the cloud of the atonement cover. In Exodus chapter 24, when God descended on Mount Sinai, the whole mountain violently trembled. The people were afraid of hearing God's voice. Moses himself trembled. When God instructed his people to build a tabernacle, he promised, I will dwell among them in the sanctuary. But here, more specifically, God would appear in the cloud of the atonement cover, the very place, specific place. And Aaron is to enter that place once a year following God's instructions. Otherwise, he will die. God did not want such a tragic event of a death of his two sons might not, such event might not happen. Die. In the light of this, what a privilege it is that you can pray to God at any time, any place. In the meantime of prayer, great privilege. Amazing blessing. Here, how is Aaron to enter the sanctuary? He is to put on linen tunic. Sacred linen tunic, linen undergarment, linen sashi, and linen turban. And he is to offer a bull for his own sin offering, and a ram for his burnt offering, and two live goats for the sin offering of the people of Israelites, and a ram for their burnt offering. Here it is stressed that. Aaron is to offer a bull for his own sin offering to make atonement for himself and his people. He is distressed. In verse 11 also, he is to bring the bull for his own sin offering to make atonement for himself and his household. And then he is to slaughter the bull for his own offering. So it shows how weak and fragile human priests are. But our Lord Jesus, our great high priest, is, di is different as one who is uh, holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners. Mm. Then the Lord said to continually, the Lord said to Moses, he gave a message to Aaron, he is to take a censer full of burning coals from the altar before the Lord and two handfuls of finely ground frankincense and take them behind the curtain behind the curtain and he put the incense on the fire before the Lord so that the smoke of the incense will conceal the atonement cover above the testimony so that he will not die. God said to Moses in chapter 33 Exodus, you cannot see my face, for no one will see me and live. Smoke of incense concealed the Ottoman cover where God was present, so the other might not die. And then here, what shall Aaron do? Let's read this verse very carefully. Okay, this verse, uh, please. He is to take some of the bruised blood with his finger sprinkled on the front of the Ottoman cover. Then he shall sprinkle some of it with his finger seven times before the atonement cover. This is really revelatory description. Can you see again? The blood of the sprink the blood of the bull had to be sprinkled in front of the altar. 
in, in, in front of the Ottoman Kaaba, that's eastward. And then before the Ottoman Kaaba, that's on the Ottoman Kaaba. Make sure the blood is sprinkled on the place. When you see the flow of Leviticus, so far, the blood was sprinkled as far as the curtain in suffering. Bring blood was sprinkled as far as the curtain that separated the most holy place and the holy place. That much they could go. But now, deeper into the very sanctuary is the most holy place. Blood was sprinkled on the Ottoman Kaaba. Ottoman Kaaba of the testimony. Testimony is the Ten Commandments. The Lord was given to his people through Moses as a blessing so that they might live by them. But when they could not keep it, it brought God's condemnation and death. Paul said, and I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. In short, law brings God's dreadful judgment. But Ottoman cover is there, all over the testimony. That's in other translations, mercy seat. Mercy seat would function through the sprinkling of the blood. Wow! Mercy seat would function through the sprinkling of the blood. Seven types of sprinkling, sprinkling means complete sprinkling. What a revelatory, amazing, beautiful description it is. Make sure the blood of the live goat for the sin offering of the people. In the same way, you should do it. Sprinkling the blood in front of the Ottoman Kaaba and on the Ottoman Kaaba. And in this way, make atonement for the most holy place because of the sin of the Israelites, rebellion of the Israelites, whatever their sins have been. Hmm? And one more time written, verse 19, to cleanse it and consecrate it. And the astounding meaning of this is found in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. He did not enter by the means of the blood of goats and calves. He entered the most holy place by his own blood, obtaining eternal redemption. Wow! It truly through his death on the cross, shedding his whole blood. You remember how he shed his blood? When he prayed at Gethsemane, his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he was flogged, when he was flogged, Flesh was ripped and torn out, and blood sprang up from his shoulders. <clears throat> when crown of thorns was put on his head and struck by the step, blood came from his forehead and flowed for his, on his face. He was crucified, blood gushed out of his hands in his three thumbs, and gushed from his body to the feet. Finally, sudden blow of water and blood burst out of his pierced side. No remaining blood, all shed, sufficient blood. How precious his blood is, surely obtaining eternal redemption. Redemption includes forgiveness. Forgiveness. The author of Hebrews wrote, the blood of animals cleansed out orderly, ceremonial cleansing. But blood of Christ Jesus, who through the eternal spirit of himself unbelievers to God, cleansed our consciences. Perfect forgiveness there. Through that forgiveness, by his blood, we have become his redeemed people belonging to God. What a grace! His forgiving and redeeming as for us, forgiven and redeemed eternally. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful, <clears throat> astounding explanation of the meaning of this. He entered the most holy place by his own blood, obtaining eternal redemption. How wants to have absolute faith, full faith in what Christ has done. He paid fully. He paid it all. That's why you say, with full belief, belief. Let's sing this part together. Okay? Shall you go? For nothing could have I will buy thy grace to claim 
I will wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen. I wash my garments in the Calvary's realm. Blood is flowing from Calvary, Golgotha. He entered the most holy place <clears throat> on our behalf. Hmm? On our behalf. So we could enter that place. So the author of Hebrews says, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is body. Yes, so near to God, near to God with a sincere heart, full assurance of faith, our hearts being sprinkled. What a spiritual secret. What an encouragement to draw near to God. And so, as Hebrews says, let's approach the throne of grace with confidence to find mercy and receive grace. Help us in our time of need. <clears throat> so, Christian life is not what we try to do and accomplish something, but rely on what Christ has done and know its effect more and more, drawing near to God. That's living by faith from first to last. Praise the Lord, Christ Jesus. Now let's think about scapegoat here. Let's read responsibly. I'll read first. When Aaron has finished making atonement for the most holy place, the tent of meeting, and the altar, he shall bring forward the life, life goat. Right. He shall send the goat away in the desert in the care of a man appointed for the task. Here, what an interesting event. <coughs> but how weird it is. What a poor goat. In Hebrew, the scapegoat is Azazel. Hmm. Azar means goat. Azar means sent. It's for goat sending for removal. The goat is goat of removal. The goat carries on itself all the sins of Israelites and sent into the desert. What does this mean? It's to separation of the sins of his people, sins of Israelites from the people. Separation, sin and people. Sin is to be separated. <coughs> See, when God made the world, at the beginning, there is no sin. But sin entered the world through one man, Adam. And sin and death came to all people. Here, sin is separated from the people. Death restored of the world into the original state. Surely paradise restored. How? The goat carries on itself all the sins of his rights and sent to a solitary place, desert, where no man would live. The, the sin would not be back to the people. Sin would be gone forever. David said in Psalm 103, as, the, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed the, all our transgressions from us. How far from the east and the west is? Infinitely far. Removed in that way. It is, as you read, another way of making a poem, of making a torment by sending it into a desert as a scapegoat. The meaning is, is also found in Jesus Christ. John says, He came to take away our sins, becoming, us, becoming the scapegoat. Isaiah said, He was cut off from the land of the living. He would take all the sin of His people, went to the place, place of solidarity, no man's living, no man, the place of no man's living. 
no man's land, he would go there, killing all the things. He would receive all the blames and take upon himself all the blames and accusations. And Isaiah said, We all like sheep went astray, but the Lord laid upon him all the inner of our soul. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Mm. And at the time of trials, he was tried before Sanhedrin, Pilate, and Herod, and then Pilate again. During all those series of trials, he remained silent. Or he only spoke when his identity has to be clear, and he stayed on the cross. Even when people, all sorts of people, the religious leaders, intellectual people, passers by, soldiers, and even those crucified who were crucified with him, heard insults at him, he remained silent. Finally, he died, breathing his last, according to Hebrews. He was crucified outside the city gate. And John the Baptist said, when Jesus coming toward him, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. I believe that when John said, wrote this, he not only had in mind, he not only have in mind the Paschal Lamb, Paschal Lamb, whose blood was sprinkled on the house of the Israelites, the angel of death Passover, not only the Passover Lamb, but also the scapegoat who takes away all sins of people into their faraway place. Look, behold, here, see this, as you read, the goat will carry on itself all the sins of Israelites. Look. So those do not look, it's the scapegoat. Those do not behold, to carry all their sins upon themselves. Do not look at this, they have to carry all their sins upon themselves throughout their lives. Meanwhile, their souls become more and more leprous. You see this? And bear all the consequences of sin. Then, who can look? Who can behold the scapegoat? Who? Those realize their sins and recognize them. Truly is a blessing to realize and respect Recognize and confess the sin, surely blessed life. Then the person can look, behold, the scapegoat who takes away all the sins into such a place. For this we need the word of God through which we can examine ourselves and discover ourselves and find our sins and wrongdoings and weakness before God. In darkness we cannot see. If you now look at this lamb, the scapegoat, we blame others. We condemn others. Thinking I'm okay. Do not okay before God at all. Can you imagine the life? I give much pain, much grief to others and to God, but I do not feel it. Can you imagine the life to live with those who have no self-discovery at all? Not just one day, throughout their lives. Adam, when God pointed out his sin, you ate, Adam said. He only blamed his wife, blamed God. The woman you gave me, the woman you put here. So, I ate. Because of you. What a poor guy Adam is. A willy husband. There are many willy husbands, many willy wives. I know that. I was one of them. And my wife had difficulty and said, You never say, I'm sorry. My response was, Now you go. Now understanding for heart pain. Many nights I slept well. Not knowing her body pain and pain in her heart. So I was a man of no self-discovery. I hope and believe that I'm getting better. Amen. See, we all have self-discovery. You know, can you see this? God is working in a husband. God is working in a husband, but wife blocks it. What a wicked sin. 
and vice versa. God is working in a wife, but husband blocks it. Oh, there should be a self-discovery. Again, how careless I am. I think, I know, I do not know the condition of sheep, but I think my shepherd life is okay. Really need self-discovery. Really, you can say Christian life is to have self-examination and self-discovery. So we can look, we can look, behold, the scapegoat. May God help us to be initiated in this grace of Jesus. Lord, help us. Amen. Amen. He became a scapegoat for all you and for me. Finally, here. Mm. And here, yes, we thought of being skipped means being separated, right? So do not try to be attached to sin. Do not embrace sin. Be detached. Hate sin. Do you remember Joseph? Mm. Joseph's case, right? He ran away from the tempting woman who tempted him day and night to be with him. But he ran away, flee, be detached. Paul said, flee the evil desires of youth. And flee from sexual immorality. Flee from <coughs> idolatry. Flee. Flee from any tempting site in the internet. Don't stay there. Flee. So many internet tempting sites. Flee any distracting, any site that distracts your spiritual life. Flee. Don't stay there. Flee. Don't be attached to it. Flee from any sin of pride, rebelliousness, disobedience, laziness, complacence. Flee. Don't be attached to it. Any anxiety, any worry, anxiety, flee from it. Anxiety kills you. Worry kills you. Fear, terrible sin. Don't fear people. Fear God. Be detached to sin. The meaning is here. Went far away. And it's one thing, one thing. It's done on the tenth day of seventh month. Tenth day. On that day, Atonement will be made to cleanse you before you all your sins will be forgiven. Come. So once a year, so once a year, what a day! The atonement. Accumulated sin, all be gone. Once a year. But in the New Testament, amazing this day, one sin eternally happened. On a single day, I removed the sin of this land. Single day. That day was the day when Jesus Christ died on the cross. Shedding his blood on that day. AD 30, in the 14th month of Nissan, Friday, 3 p.m. Some say so AD 32, doesn't matter. Exact time, God scheduled as he prepared an angel for the very hour, day, month, and year. Same way. Exactly God prepared on that day, single day, the Son of God died on the cross, shedding his blood, removed all sins. More specifically for us, it is the day one believes in Jesus' death and resurrection. One believes that Jesus truly died for my sins and rose again from the dead on that day, on the moment. This is the day one makes a confession. You are the Christ. That day, that moment. Christ means in the New Testament is written in, in Greeks, Christos, meaning Messiah in Hebrew. This is the Messiah. Not only the Jews, but all mankind has been waiting. You are the Christ. In the Old Testament, yes, Messiah means anointed. Anointed. Prophets, priests, and kings are anointed. No one would take all three offices. But Jesus did. He's our perfect prophet, perfect prophet, perfect priest, and perfect king. In the past, God spoke through many prophets. The last days, God spoke through his son Jesus. His words are optimum, ultimatum. More than that, he's the word, perfect prophet. He's an eternal perfect priest. As he thought of, with his own blood, sacrificed himself. Surely he saves us from our sins. Perfect priest, interceding for us forever. And king, raised from the dead. The first one from the dead. Rule of our kings. A perfect prophet, priest and king. You are the Christ. You are everything to me. You are all the world to me. You are my lover. He's the solution to all human problems. You are the Christ. He's the 
all about my faith, all about life, all about the world, all about the, all about the history. You are the Christ. What a day. It used to be not in the past, not in the future, at the present. Amen. Amen. Christ of God, God chose his son to be Christ, the Christ, son of the living God. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, in this passage, we see amazing description. The priest sprinkled the blood in front of the atonement cover of the testimony. On the atonement, seven times, Father, we find a standing meaning of this. Jesus entered the most holy place by his own blood, obtaining eternal redemption. Lord, we praise you for this grace. And Jesus became scapegoat, playing all the people's occasion because of our sins went far away, no returning of the sin. Father, help us to put our absolute faith in Christ Jesus, drawing near to you, <coughs> looking beyond the Lamb of God, scapegoat, lead each one's life with daily confession. You are the Christ. Thank you for yours. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.